Good day, my name is Dave Glover. Today, I'd like to take a little bit of time and walk through how to create and schedule reports within the NetWitness platform. After logging in, typically you are presented with a dashboard view. This is my particular view that I have when I log in. You may have something different. What we want to do is we want to navigate to the Reports tab. Once we do that, we'll be presented with the Rules view. In NetWitness, reports are comprised of different rules. So the rules are what actually do my querying, and then they're put into the reports. And I can also have multiple, multiple rules within the reports as well. And we'll walk through how to do that also. So everything starts with a rule. On the left here, we've got some groups. Some of these are out of the box, some of the ones that I've created. So let's start by going into my folder. And what I want to do is I want to create a report looking for admin activity. So what I want to do is I want to click on the red plus and I want to click on NetWitness Platform DB. Now, as you see here, there are three different choices. If you want to run reports out of the NetWitness database, which probably is 99% of the time what you would be doing, we're going to pick the Platform DB. If you have NetWitness tied in with a warehouse such as Hadoop or something other than that, we would actually pick the warehouse DB and it would reach into that other data store or data lake and pull the data out. If I want to run reports based upon incidents and how long they've been assigned and so forth and so on, I would do it out of the respond DB. But again, for our example, we're just going to go ahead here and use the NetWitness platform DB. First thing I want to do is I want to name the report. So we'll just call this admin activity. We have some options here for summarize. We have event count, packet count, session size, and custom. Typically what I end up using is I use custom most of the time. And I'll show you where this comes into play. It allows me to do aggregations within the select line uh, and a few other things. So let's actually go ahead here. We want to select our destination user account. We want to also uh, choose our event description. So we're going to keep it kind of simple. And then what I want to do is I want to throw in a count of user destination. There are other types of aggregation functions that I can use. I can do some. So if I want to count the bandwidth that somebody has transferred across a firewall, if I do a sum on bytes, that will actually add up all the bytes between those connections or by IPs, however you sort it, and give you a summation. There are lots of different aggregation types of functions that we can do. But we're going to stick with the count for right now. Here we have an alias, so I'll just put in username and description. This is what gets presented in the, in the report. So what I want to do here now in the where clause, I have a list of users or admin users that I'd like to use. Now we could do something as simple as destination user equals Dave, for example, and that will work just fine. But what if I have more users than that? What I can do is I actually have these lists that are available to me. So let me remove uh, my name here and let's go underneath compliance. We can go into filtering Canada to see the different types of lists that are here. So we want to go down to user activity, administrative users. And what I can do is make sure I'm over here on the where, click this and then click into the where clause. What this is going to do is this is going to say where the destination user account equals somebody in this list. Well, who is in this list? How do I add to this list? Let's go ahead and how, take a look at how we do that. Click back here on the manage and we can click on lists and we have our administrative users. So I'll click on edit on that and we can see that the contents of this list are admin and Bob and Dave and uh, so forth. And as I had more people that I may want to watch, I could add those into this list or create many more lists as much as I wanted to. But we do have our administrative users. We have our list values. Now let's get back into the rule and we have the user test equals user activity administrative users. Perfect. Now what we want to do is we want to do a sort. So let's do a sort on the count. We want to do that descending. My limit of 20. Let's go ahead now and test this rule just to make sure that all the syntax is valid and everything else. We want to choose our data source. Most of the time this will be a broker. Format, 
you can pick any format you want. Typically, I do tabular. It's just super easy. Uh, maybe I do just 12 hours. You may see this use relative time calculation. The way this works is when I do not check that, as it is right now, it will be the last complete 12 hours. So if you are running this test at, for example, 11.39 a.m., this will go from 11 a.m. back 12 hours. If I do check this, now it will go from 11.39 back 12 hours. So it will go from right now minus 12. In our case, for the test, it really doesn't matter. So let's go ahead and run this test. And we see here that results were returned. And we have pseudo user, logged in, logged off, great. Now there are some here without a description. And that just may be the case of how the data was logged. Maybe there was no description in the events. What I want to do here, just to make this report a little bit more usable, for example, I want to take out where the description is empty. So let's close this here, and let's go back to the where clause. And what we want to add in here is let's throw in and event description exists. Very simple. And now what we can do is we go ahead and test this rule again. We have the data source and format already selected. We'll go ahead here and click on uh, run test. Results have returned. And lo and behold, we do not have an empty description. So this is exactly what we wanted. Perfect. Well, one thing to note here on this test rule or when the rules run in reports or anything else, all of these are clickable. So if you were in this test rule and you saw something that looked really weird and, hey, I really want to go take a look at that and see what's going on, you can actually click on any one of these, uh, the usernames or the descriptions, and it will actually bounce you back into Investigator. Another task for another time. So let's go ahead and here, close. Now what we want to do is we want to go ahead and save this rule. So admin activity, we'll go ahead and save this. And now what we want to do is click Use. Now, if you didn't click Use, you just click Save and Close. That's fine. You can get back into it. Not a problem. What we want to do is we want to go into Report, and it's going to say, what folder do you want to put this report in? Now, I don't specifically have one, so I'll just drop it into the root, and I'll click Select. And what we have here, this is now the construct for the report. And we see report admin activity. Well, I don't want the word report in there, so let me just remove that. And lo and behold, we now have admin activity. I now have this in here. This is the rule that we just created. Well, I'd like to make this look a little bit prettier. So let me drag in a header, for example. And what I can do is I can go ahead and change this header to something else. Uh, maybe I want to put in you know, a comment down in the bottom. I can add a whole bunch of different things. At this point, if I wanted to, I could go ahead and schedule this. But maybe what I want to do is I want to grab a few things and put a few other rules. So let me remove these headers and so forth. If I go back here and click on the rules, we now have the rule library that we saw before in the Manage Rules page where we created this rule. Maybe I want to drag in event counts, for example. Maybe I want to drag in top firewall activities or uh, anything for that matter. Once I've got this here, uh, maybe I want to change it to a type of a chart or whatever, it doesn't matter. Now I want to click Schedule. I'm now presented with the Schedule Report page, and I can do a few things here. First of all, I want to name the schedule. Uh, it can be the same as the report name. It really doesn't matter. Uh, activities. What do I want to run it against? Again, typically this is the broker. What time zone are you in? Now, this is relevant if you want to run the report at midnight, for example. Midnight, your local time. I happen to be in East Coast time, so let me go ahead and set that. I'll set it as default. That way it won't ask me again. When do I want to run this report? Well, I can go ahead and maybe make it daily. Daily at what time? Well, here's I can make it quarter after midnight, for example. Now, if I don't choose relative time collection, it will actually go from midnight to 11.59. Perfect. It's not going to run from quarter after midnight back 24 hours. So that's another use why that's here as well. What do I run under, want to run it on? Well, we'll run it on the past 24 hours. Now I've got a couple of options here too with the output actions. So let's just expand all these out. If you want to change the logo for the report and you don't want to use the RSA logo, no problem. You click on change logo and you can now put your own logo in there. 
So let's take a look at some of these other options. In email, I can actually email off this report. I can pick and choose. Do I want to email it as a PDF, as a CSV, as both? Uh, do I want to do some delimiters or some multi-value delimiters? This is useful if I'm going to have some other upstream system receive this email and parse out the data and take a look at it or something uh, along those lines. Now we have some other options here where we could actually uh, take this data and SFTP it to a location. Uh, maybe you want to upload this to a web server somewhere else. I could uh, send it to a URL. I could drop it to a network share. Uh, quite a few options here as far as what you want to do with the output of this report. The last thing here is dynamic list. What dynamic list is going to do, now in our case we picked a couple of different fields so not hugely relevant, but let's say for example I want to run a, use, a, a list of users who did a particular behavior. And when that report runs, I want to take those users and put them in a list. And now the next day, I run that report and I use the list that was created on day one as a filter in day two so that I could see if something has changed or something along those lines. But that's where dynamic lists are super helpful. Being able to populate a list based upon the data that's generated from the report. So let's go on back up here. Uh, we really don't want to do any of these. So we're going to schedule this uh, at quarter after midnight and for the past 24 hours. And what we're going to do is just click the schedule button. So now if we come back here into manage and click on reports, view all schedules, we can now see that our admin activities is scheduled for daily and it'll run quarter after midnight. Once the report has run, you will see the last run here filled out, duration, you'll see a status of completed. You can actually view the report right from here, or what you can do is that report will be available in this screen here. So what you'll do is you'll see actually the report listed, and let me flip to another day and show you what that will look like. So the report that I had run uh, prior shows up here on May 5th and May 6th, so let's take a look at what that actually shows. So when I go ahead and now click on that, this will actually show me the result of this report. So we can see here that there's multiple rules in here. There's a machine summary, uh, and then there's uh, you know a bunch of other rules that are in here. So this is how the report would look. Now again, much like when we ran the test rule, if I see anything interesting, I can go ahead and click on this, and it will actually drive me into Investigator around the time periods that I had the report run. I hope that was useful. Thank you for your time.